What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we have a ton of stuff to get done on the truck. We already started yesterday. That's going to be a separate video, but we fixed the rear brake cable here yesterday. All new right there. But today we're doing shocks the whole way around. We need to do an oil change and we got to mess with this track bar and get that fixed. Super excited here because we are going with some really nice shocks, some Bilsteins. I think I'm saying that correctly. Oh yeah, 5100, baby. So, Bilstein 5100's going in. Wait, 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 wait. Shirts, I forgot the shirts. Link down in the description to the Amazon store for shirts. Check it out guys, supports the channel, I appreciate it. So we've made it really far into our project, or very easy project. Shocks are not typically a challenging thing. And then this happened. Some of you are already laughing because you know what this is. And for those of you that don't, let me explain. This is for when it's hard to get to a nut. They put this on so it hits metal and provides your resistance so you can undo the uh, bolt. Broke. Yay. So, we're going to move on. I'm going to show you guys how to, how we're going to address it. I'm sure someone has a different way, but we're going to get that figured out. I did try taking a pair of vice grips and seeing if I couldn't clamp down. Sometimes that works, but the area to get in there is so small. I can't get a big pair of vice grips on. I can only get a small pair. So it's not really holding it down like I need it to. We're going to keep moving though. We're going to try the driver side and hopefully that one doesn't break or passenger side, excuse me. Hopefully the passenger side one doesn't break. Here's what I was explaining that piece that fell off was. I don't really know how mine broke the way it did because it doesn't look anyway. So I do recommend a little WD-40. I use PB Blaster today. I like PB Blaster for us, WD-40 for heat stuff like exhaust stuff. But uh, we put that on, came apart. And I wanna show you the contraption I have here. So 18 millimeter for the bottom bolt. And then here, I just have an adjustable wrench on here holding this still and just a breaker bar. Breaker bar and just turning. You can get in there pretty good. So I just wanted to make sure I got that in there so you guys could see how it came apart. Okay, so rear and front shocks are completely done. They're compressed and they're not coming back, so they definitely need replaced. Passenger side rear lower bolt was a pain in the butt. This side wasn't too bad, but passenger side, I actually hooked my impact up to get it off because it was such a bear to do. Okay, so on this lower bolt, I used a breaker bar with a socket on one side, and then I used just a ratchet on the other side. I do this so I can hold the nut or the bolt in place while I loosen the other one up, and that combination lets me do it. You could also use just a regular wrench on one side and a ratchet or breaker bar, whatever. I have used an impact on one of them already, so you can do that, a breaker bar and an impact to get it loose, whichever is easiest. The bolt up top, right? Oh right there it's off i took it off already that's an 18 millimeter and then from there sometimes you do have to hit it from the side and it'll pop off other times it comes off remember pb blaster is your friend so i'm going to quick take this finish taking this bolt off and then now if you have good shocks that are still charged, be careful because when you take this bolt off, they might pop down. These shocks are completely done. There's zero, all but zero resistance. Okay, so here we have the Bilstein shocks. These are the 5100s. I did a fair amount of research on this as far as which ones for which. And from what I can tell that the 4600s, I think are the yellow ones, are meant for stock applications. And this is technically a stock application. It does sit just a tad higher because of the heavier springs up front. And we're gonna airbag the rear. So that'll probably bump the rear up a little bit. Well, I know it'll bump the rear up a little bit. I went with the 5100s, one I, and call me, call me goofy, but they look better than the yellow nonsense. Also, so we got the 5100s and I looked it up and they're really, these are meant for zero to two inches of lift, it says. And I found several examples of people running these and there's no issue. So we went with the 5100s. 
they're very close in price to the 4600s and so i need to do some research on what exactly is different with between the two i have heard people say that these are just a little more advanced i've heard people say that the 4600s internally are identical it's just the exterior color so i need to look into that but i wanted to go with the premium option i've never had bilsteins before i've always ran uh, monroe reflex which i've liked especially on 150s i really like them on my 250 the white truck i had them on at one point and they were okay i've since switched the front to rough country and they've done pretty well so we're gonna see how these bilsteins do uh, i think i paid about a hundred dollars more for these than if i would have went with the rough country still so i am hopeful that there's some increase in performance but we're going to compare them and see how that goes Okay, so rear shocks are installed, guys. They look killer. I wish the rest of under there looked killer too, but the shocks look awesome. They're in. Holy crap, there's some resistance to get them. Now, before we can get to the front one, I need to go see if I can't get another bolt. So while I'm working on that, we're gonna let the oil drain because we gotta do an oil change today as well. So I'm gonna get working on that. I'm gonna get my oil pan under there. Let the, yeah. Let the oil start draining out, and we're gonna to try to resolve this other thing. So in a perfect world, in an ideal world, not even a perfect world, but an ideal scenario, this is supposed to be an easy job. But alas, just like most of the projects on this truck, something had to go wrong. So let me catch you guys up to date. Rear shocks, all done, went perfectly fine. Passenger side, went great. I'd still have to put the new shock and bolt in but it came apart very nicely. Oh, the driver side. So you guys should have already seen what happened here with the retainer piece breaking off. So I've gone at this with a grinder. The problem here is the grinder was starting to grind away at this piece. I didn't want that. So then we went to what did we go to next? Ah, so currently I'm working with the saws. Also, I have these keeping this out a little bit and I'm cutting through in here. So if you have a small grinder, that might work, but you do have to cut through a lot to get to it. I was thinking that I was just gonna be able to put like an X here, pop it out, but then there's also, I forgot that there's a metal center for the bushing as well. So I did get some, a new bolt already to kind of hold me over. My Ford dealership, Honda Ford, they are, they're getting in a pair of the bolt and nuts so I can have a backup. The other side I'll reuse, but this side, this side needs to, needs to come out. So I'm working on cutting this out with a Sawzall. And the one thing I want to say is I've had much better luck with a thinner blade, but this blade's worn out, so I have to get another one. But what's happening is you need a thinner one so it clears the shock body itself. So as you guys can probably see, it's, it's raining. This is miserable to work on. So I want to first say this. I have an issue with my oil filter as an update for how today's day has gone. I can't get one of the new ones to thread on at all. The old one threads right on, no issue at all. So I'm not sure what's happening there. I tried, I went and got a second new fuel filter, oil filter, same thing. So I don't know if Ford had a bad batch with the threads. Um, we're gonna resolve that, but I need to get all this done. Finally, I got this out. So once I sawed through, I'm gonna show you here what I did. Okay, so there we go. So here's where the shock sits, right here. And I took a Sawzall and cut down here, which left uh, that piece there running, sitting flush against. So it was kind of up here and it took me forever to beat it out you can see some scuffs 
it didn't clear it was too big i was coming through this top part and i kept trying to mess with it around change its position hammer it out with i don't know where i put it but with a basically a small pry bar and my mini sledge that you guys have seen numerous times before josh taught josh helped teach me how to work on vehicles so that's where i got that from but uh, finally i got it out so i have two new ones of these coming i am going to get the i did get something rigged up that'll help me put this on at least just for now but yeah this this has turned into a nightmare i might get the bottom in first loosely i'll probably get the bottom in loosely first and then press down on everything and push it in so i'll let you guys know what i do and what seems to be the easiest setup anyway i'm gonna grab my stuff here get to work because i got to do the other side yet too uh that has been my nightmare plus then the oil filter not cooperating if you have a factory 6.7 with now the aftermarket pan 13 quarts of oil I have the Magtech pan, link in the description if you're interested, and that adds two extra quarts. So we're at 15, we're good to go there. I'm gonna get these shocks on guys, touch base with me in a little bit. Okay YouTube, so a couple quick things here. I lost a bunch of audio, I'm super sorry, it didn't make any sense. So I'm gonna show you some videos, I'm gonna try to talk over some things. So I'm gonna try to get you the clips you need to see. We're also gonna talk about this contraption here, and this is what actually held up that project and made me not be able to get to the track bar I was hoping to have replaced and that ball joint. So let's get into this. Okay, sorry, there's some condensation issues we're having. So anyway, up top here, this stayed in place. You'll see a, a clip of me with an adjustable wrench down below because on the factory ranchos, you need to put a wrench of some kind in there to hold this stud in place while you undo the top. I will try to find you the bolt size, but if you have aftermarket ones or replacements of any kind, they're probably it's probably a different bolt up top. At least it was for these guys. Anyway, so underneath you'll need a ratchet or a breaker bar and a ratchet, one on either side of those, so you can break one loose and hold one in place as you're doing that. Again, guys, as always, I clean them up before everything goes back together. I didn't have any issues back here. Uh, I hit the side of the shock to pop it off the pin up top there. That should still be on video, and if uh, the audio is bad, I'll at least uh, cut the audio out and show you the visual. How I got these on is I started up top. I got it on and got a few threads on, and then I pressed this shock up and put this lower bolt on. That was a little bit of a chore. A lot of pressure on those shocks. Anyway, if I can find that, I will show the clip of me struggling to get that stuff up there would he stop doing whatever he's doing over there making so much noise while I'm trying to make a video so guys that is what held up the project here on the 67 getting the shocks done again I was hopeful to get the track bar done as well that didn't happen so that is going to be our next project is tackling the track bar but the edge needs front brake so that's going to have to happen first not quite the normal video I make, but we'll throw the edge back on the channel. Those of you guys that have been following for a long time know the edge was one of our first successful videos to happen with the brake booster. So we will throw it back on the channel for old time's sake. Now we're also going to be doing a review of how the Bilstein shocks feel. Are they actually worth the money? I did find these for $300. There was like $304, $305 after tax. There will be an affiliate link down in the description for those. I bought them all in one kit. And other than this truck being really dirty right now, things are going well. Guys, wheels and tires are soon gonna be for sale. We're still gonna clean up this little exhaust pipe. I don't know if you can see it, how well that's coming through. I just got back from camping the other day, so it's a mess. But we're polishing this up, making it look semi-nice. It looked like that. We're making it look like that. I don't 100% know why because we're going to do an exhaust on this truck anyway. So we're going to do that and then we're going to turn around and take that crap off. And finally, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button, guys. I'll catch you in the next upload.